Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Heaven's Monsters podcast. With me today, by himself, is none other than, and this, ladies and gentlemen, we didn't give him a gimmick, I called him the Shadow Spider, but in honor of his favorite wrestler, we are calling him the phenomenal Shadow Spider, Chris Petrie! <laughs> We're trying to work on my friend here, getting his voice out there, so let's do that. We're going to do the 25th of November and of Monday Night Raw and the 27th of NXT in this video review for WWE. So let's go ahead and do it. Also, in, in advance, we will do the next, uh, I think, we're not doing Impact. Impact, that was weird. They went back in time kind of gimmick. Yeah. I'm not covering that. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, if you count also SmackDown and 205 Live, AEW, then yeah, that's two other podcasts. It would have been four in total with an Impact. But, uh -uh. I'm not covering all that, just trying to get all those names that I have no idea. <laughs> you know me and names, bro. I suck at them. So, with that said, let's go ahead and get on topic with 205 Live. I mean, uh, yeah. Raw. I just watched 205 Live, so that's yeah. why I had down to Thank you. Raw. And he's better with names than I am. He is. So, we start tonight with the whole Raw roster lined up around the ring with Seth Rollins entering the ring in a suit to issue things of what happened with Raw at Survivor Series. And like I said it, NXT, he said it, NXT is the A show while they are the C show. So shout out to a boy, Terrence, aka T Money, who would say, theoretically, the A show is raw because it's the longest running. It's the oldest. It's still going. But to this, competition wise, Rob, uh, Rob, uh, the brand supremacy, the numbers count. NXT is the A-show in 2019, going into 2020. Let's see if they can up their game next year. So, with that said, Seth Rollins, dude. Dude, I'm sorry. If I was in his position, I would blame myself first before anybody else. And he didn't. He blamed the fact that the weakest leak was Randy Orton, which I don't know. I think uh, I think Ricochet was kind of the weakest link. I'm not going to lie, considering. Well, oh, actually, Kevin Owens, because he got eliminated first. Uh, see? I wouldn't ra uh, Randy Orton. Randy Orton. People came to see Randy Orton. <laughs> and Ricochet, for sure. But then we would have him look at the Queen, Charmel. Right, Charlotte. I mean, Char yeah. Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair. Charmel. <laughs> they always say Charmel. She wasn't a wrestler. She's not there. Charmel. Who Charmel? Booker T's wife. Ah. <laughs> I had a queen. I, I just went with a different C. <laughs> Where'd my brain go? I wasn't even thinking about her. It's the name. Charmel. Charlotte. Yeah, I told you I could buy with names. Watch. T-Money's not going to let me live that down. <laughs> anyway, that said, Charlotte Flair would actually fail to win her team overall because of her feud with Asuka. So that was in itself. AOP gets chewed out because they weren't even there. They didn't even have a match. They weren't even in the tag team match to show their dominance over the other brands of tag teams. Where the hell were they? And that's what's rightfully so. I would chew them out. I would actually give thanks to the Viking Raiders for actually getting the one win they got. He didn't even do that. Mainly because he's turning heel, ladies and gentlemen. We already know with the way he's acting. He's wearing a suit. When he wears a suit, you know he's turned heel. That's the thing. When he's shirtless or he's wearing his gear, he's babyface. So with that said, everybody, one after another, especially this is when Everybody left. He goes and chews out Rey Mysterio and says that both him and his loser of a son didn't the, get the job done. Over oh, the line. Uh-huh. Everybody walked out. Even the Viking Raiders. Everybody. Except Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Kevin Owens is in the ring 
to really stand there and take his crap over and over and over as he just keeps mentioning stuff until finally he just stunners him. Thank you, Kevin Owens. I'm glad somebody's doing the Stone Cold Stunner, or in this case, the KO Stunner. <laughs> let's get let's get real here. He ain't no Stone Cold. Yeah. You don't drink beer. I don't drink beer. I'll bring in the freaking sodas. I'll bring in sodas. I'll bring it bring a different brand all the time, and then pop those sucker. Go. Ugh. I got soda, uh, sugar, so, uh, <laughs> soda all over me. Then again, I can imagine him when he smells like beer hmm. all over him. <laughs> After that, it would be issued a challenge from Seth Rollins to Kevin Owens for that main event that night, and he accepted. So we'll be covering that. Next up is a... Yeah. It will, it's a match between Bobby Lashley and Titus O'Neil, where Titus O'Neil is ultimately disqualified for the interference of Rusev who comes in after being told by a supposed fan that he wanted an autograph for his kid. He then turns 180 and says, you've been uh, impeached. I mean, you've been served a fine and a, all that. He cannot be near Rusev. I mean, uh, he Lana. cannot be Lana and Bobby Lashley. Sorry, I'm still stuck on that Rusev and Lana thing. It goes together. They've done it for so many years. It's hard to just break it. <laughs> in which case during his match with Titus O'Neil Bobby Lashley gets jumped by Rusev and he he just keeps whooping his ass Lana is just yelling at him but then uh, finally the uh, police officers come to arrest him cuff him before he does anything bad on the announce table for Raw on the stage but he managed to get one good push and pushes him off the stage on the tables. And then another good push, he kicks the freaking, um, what do you call those things? Those metal bars stacked up in the tower of metal onto Bobby. I was like, oh, <laughs> damn, Rusev, you crazy. I love it. Everybody's saying, thank you, Rusev, Rusev Day. Thank you, Rusev, Rusev Day. And the one who's not loving it is Lana. She's being interviewed for how she feels and the fact that, again, she thinks it's all about her, that Rusev is doing this because of her. I think he's past the point of her because he already took off his ring. He's done with her. He just wants payback on Bobby. And... Uh, I think this is going to be settled at TLC, don't you? Yeah, yeah. December 15th. Mm -hmm. But what kind of match would they have? I didn't see chairs. Was it a last, would it be a last man standing match? Because he was buried. Mm. Yeah. Right. Last yeah. man standing match, no whole bar match. Uh, steel cage. Probably something like... Uh, Certification on a pole, or uh, might be a ladder match with the idea of putting something there that actually signifies that he will no longer be put on a warrant, but is actually more a warrant, or whoever wins will have to be, uh, I guess, transferred to NXT or SmackDown, so they no longer on the same brand. That might work. Yeah, yeah, I think that work a ladder match to see who's going to get drafted. And say bye bye. Oh, it would be funny if he gets drafted, but instead of if Rusev won, instead of Bobby getting drafted, it'll just be Lana. He says, "You are going to SmackDown." What? Well, I'm just gonna take my hubby. No, not him. Just you. What? I want you gone. He can stay. You gone. <laughs> That'll be perfect. This has always been about me. Well, yeah. You want you want me out of your life? Me too. You go. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have AOP against Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. A feud that's still been going thanks to the fact that the dominance of AOP. But they only target Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. They don't target nobody else. They don't especially target the Viking Raiders, who are the Raw Tag Team Champions. You think that would be the number one? 
You're picking while, you're waiting, while you're waiting to have been dominant. Mm -hmm. So why not? Of course, AOP wins. Next up, we have Andrada versus Akira Tozawa. Akira Tozawa didn't do so well in his cruiserweight match at Survivor Series. He did his best, but Leo Rush got the win. And ultimately, thanks to the outside interference of Zelina Vega, we would have the winner in Andrade. As usual. It's funny that right after they showcase Andrade they and Zelina Vega, her husband, Alistair Black, makes an announcement that he wishes to brawl with Buddy Murphy in the nearby future. When, in which case, Buddy Murphy has a match with a superstar that has not been getting a match, and he has rightfully complained about it on his YouTube account, which we see is Matt Hardy and his triumphant, wonderful return. <laughs> like this? Yeah. We're waiting for Jeff Hardy. We want the Hardy Bros back. And we gained the tag team champions. So Ooh, they never yeah, to see Viking Raiders versus the Hardy Brothers. Ooh, the Hardy Boys. I want to see Broken. I want to see Broken Jeff Hardy. We've seen bro uh, Woken uh, Matt Hardy, but we need to see Brother Nero. He was mentioned thanks to Bray Wyatt. <laughs> he was mentioned. My Brother Nero! Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Next up, we have a... What the? Oh, that's oh, right. Wait. That's right. Apparently, during a confrontation with the fact that Humberto Carrillo was supposed to get a one-on-one -on -one title shot with AJ Styles, yo boy, his bro his fellow mother uh mother lovers too sweet the good brothers Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows jumped him and ultimately made it impossible for him to wrestle so he's looking for a free night Ricochet comes out then Drew McIntyre then Randy Orton and, and Rey Mysterio <laughs> and Rey Mysterio thank you. They all come out wanting a piece of that United States gold, in which case Ricochet comes up with the idea that all four of them should fight, and whoever wins goes on to wrestle AJ Styles. AJ looks at his brothers and says, that's a terrible idea, right? And they're both like, that's actually a good idea. He's like, why do I even ask you guys? <laughs> and he's like, fine, we got it, you got it. Ultimately, in this one fall match, this ain't elimination rules, it would be Rey Mysterio who comes out on top after, if I'm correct, he pinned Ricochet or did he pin Randy Orton? No, he pinned Ricochet. Because the uh, OC cost Randy Orton oh. the number one contender oh, yeah. against AJ Styles. Yeah, they pulled him out when he had the pin on Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Oh, you know he was going to get him back for that. Yeah. The next match after that would be AJ Styles defending his United States title against Rey Mysterio. In which case, you know for a fact that the Good Brothers, Carl and Luke, would be in that match interfering, ultimately pulling out the ref. And while the referee was knocked out, they jump Rey Mysterio. Here comes Randy Orton to even up the odds and pay back the OC for that little unjust interference. Next up. It would be AJ Styles who, not, who gets RKO'd and then freaking 619 and then frog splashed by Rey Mysterio to get the 1, 2, 3 as Randy Orton slides out and his son, Rey's son Dominic comes in to congratulate his father on his, and how many times has he been the United States champion? Hey, two times. This would be the third? Yeah. There you go. So now, your boy, AJ Styles, is titleless. But, and I'm, this is my opinion, 
I think the reason why is because this gives opportunity to get him away from that title so he can be the next contender against somebody who he didn't get to finish his deal at one particular Survivor Series, Brock Lesnar. I mean, think about it. One loss is one's opportunity. So with him not having that title, if he doesn't get a title shot, which WWE hasn't been doing, I would like to see the rematch between Brock Lesnar and AJ Styles, as well as Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton. Samoa Joe is on Raw. So, shoot. Alistair Black. We got a Drew McIntyre. We got a Raw powerhouse listing of potential winners who can take away the title besides Seth Rollins, who is definitely not going to get a title shot because, let's face it, heel versus heel is not always something we want to see. We want to see the underdog against the dominant heel, which is Brock Lesnar. He ain't no babyface. He ain't going to be no babyface anytime soon. Oh, next up, we would have the match between one half of the women's tag team champions, Asuka, versus the queen, Charlotte Flair. I almost said Char... Char Belgate. <laughs> In which case, thanks to the interference of her tag team partner, champion, Kyrie Sane, Interfering multiple times, from what I understand, because I'm look at, I'm skimming through, I'm seeing her getting the map ring and running away and coming back and getting her hands on her, but then she gets once again a face full of the green mist. Prior to the fact of people like Tajiri and the great Muda. And Charlotte loses again in that manner. Eric Rowan comes out with his cage. Still not revealing what's inside and beats up a local talent. Do you know what? How do you say that name? Robert. Kyle, Kyle. Robert? Kyle yeah. Robert? Yeah, Kyle Robert, I yeah. think. He gets, he gets slammed. Yeah, he... Zero effort. Mm-hmm. We have the main event. Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. And in this match, we would see the moment where... Kevin Owens would win, but surprisingly, AOP shows up, and they wreck Kevin Owens, ultimately ending in disqualification to the favor of Kevin Owens, and Seth Rollins is, well, it's thought to be next, but he, they just look at him and they walk off. Now everybody's wondering... Is AOP looking to work with Seth Rollins and make a new heel faction for Seth? Because that's what they do. They always put some lackeys behind them. And this time, we got two big effing mothers. Mm. Any of your thoughts on that, my brother? Uh, Well, you said... They touched Kevin Owens, but they did not touch Seth for no reason. Mm-hmm. So I think they might work for Seth Rollins. I hope they won't. I hope they won't now do a shield. Mm, and, no. uh, More like the two JJs. Yeah, just bigger. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll be right back. Uh. Well, I'm going to get NXT. Give me a sec. All right. Before we continue, a shout out to the remaining Heaven's Monsters podcast members. We got Xavier Hill, Mike Henry, Andre Mitchell. A link to their YouTube pages will be in the descriptions down below, as always. And a remaining shout out to T-Money, Renee, I'm about to say your name, Pharaoh, and Delvin. And of course, a shout out to my boy Chris Petrie right here. Let's move on to NXT. Writing straight from War Games and Survivor Series, the freaking NXT is celebrating their triumphant weekend by having a huge party and everybody's invited. 
except the Undisputed Era, because they crashed the party for some reason that, you know, they are clearly invited to, but they are saying that it's because of them that Survivor Series and War Games was so damn good. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I was pausing it, putting myself in the story, thinking, the only person we can thank is Roderick Strong, because he got the win. Shayna Baszler, she got the win. Rhea Ripley and her women's team, they got the win. And Leo Rush. The men dropped the ball. The uh, Undisputed Air dropped the ball. And the freaking Pete Dudd and Adam Cole didn't even matter. There was no point for them. It was just them sh being a, an a bonus, like an add-on. They were just extra. That's all they were. Because everybody was more paying attention to Brock Lesnar and Rey Mysterio and The Fiend versus Daniel Bryan than Adam Cole and just pretty much two worn out guys who were both bandaged. Like, uh, this is a sad sight. <laughs> but nonetheless, it would be a title match for the tag team ch championships between the Undisputed Era of Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish versus Dominic Dozovic and Keith Lee, the man who definitely, without question, has been the talk of the entire week, even on backsta WWE backstage, mentioning his potential future of being a world champion. Let's face it, he brought it to Roman Reigns. He got that respect. Yeah. He pound it. There you go. So, with that said, it would be Tommaso Ciampa saying that now that the war is over, he can plans on getting to his Goldie and that nobody's standing and nobody else is standing in his way except for Finn Balor. The prince as Prince Devin. Mm hmm And he says, I'm in your way. So it would be a match for the main event between Finn Balor and Tommaso Ciampa. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead. We start off the night with the tag team match that actually mm, is sad. They actually did get them. Despite all their fights at War Games, which the Undisputed Era lost, and they also lost the tag team match against the New Day, which they eliminated first. That was stupid. Because they got wrecked by Viking Raiders. They actually defended their titles against Do uh, Dominic Dozovic and Keith Lee well enough to get the win. And defend their titles. And, and the favorite story where Adam Cole trying to come in the ring. And Keith Lee had pounced Adam Cole to the ground. Oh, crowd. yeah, thank you for reminding me. That. Keep me going, keep me going. <laughs> keep me going, keep me going. <laughs> take it, take it. And, and, and Dominic Dozovic Dominic Dozovic couldn't believe it. He was looking, he supposed to be looking at the two guys with wrestling. He got he got leg sweet. Yeah. He got high low. Yeah, that's a move I want to use if we were a tag team. Yeah, me, me and all the guys, we just pull it off and go high low, high low. In which case. I gotta say this much. That wouldn't be a finisher, though. That would be just a signature. Just to lead up to a finisher. <laughs> In which case, um... I don't know if those were actual... That would be funny if those were actual fans that just got freaking Adam Cole on the second row in the front. Yeah. Next to the stage. Oh, they got more than they wanted. They got the extra access. They got the freaking... Un, uh, the undisputed NXT champion thrown on him. <laughs> I was like, damn. Keith Lee, you freak. What the hell? You just you freaking bulldoze his ass. No, you freaking <laughs> set his ass in flying in a car wreck like something from Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> ultimately, though, the Undisputed Era retains their tag team gold. Next, we got Monsoor versus Shane Thorne 
and Mansoor, the uh, with the, all the hype going on in Saudi Arabia of Crown Jewel and his win as against Cesaro, and the previous year of him winning the fifty man battle royale, the uh, well, last year he tried carrying that hype and had to deal with Damian Priest. That didn't do, do so good, but he managed to pick up the ball and get a win on Shane Thorne. In which case, Shane Thorne has been getting a major losing streak. He had a win streak, and then he lost it. Yeah, he lost To Johnny Gargano. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Johnny Gargano, his wife, Candice LeRae, goes on to take on Dakota Kai in a fact that she wants payback for what she did at War Games. Beating up her friend, and she calls herself the bigger sister to... Uh, Tiga Knox, right? Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, Tiga Knox. Which case it ends in disqualification because Dakota Kai came in the ring with new music and a trophy. The knee brace that she used to hit to Kyla, uh, uh, Candace away. Thank you. And got herself disqualified. Man, she, she looked like a, a mad lady. Oh yeah, she mad. Next up, despite losing on Raw and on Survivor Series, Akira Tozawa is given an opportunity at the Cruiserweight belt of NXT, which I'm confused because he's a Raw superstar. If he had one, wouldn't that mean the Cruiserweight title goes to Raw, or did he goes and gets drafted to NXT? Eh? Mm. Mm. Yeah, he, he might win it. He, he wanted he take the Cruiserweight title... To Raw. Mm -hmm. But he didn't. Leo Rush defended that title belt, rightfully so. And thanks to the watching uh, 205 Live, we have this info. After the show, we, after that match, he would, Leo Rush, the champ, would be interviewed and mention Akira Dezawa. Akira Dezawa shows up, extending his hand and giving him a hug, saying, thank you. But, his former enemy, or still his enemy, Angel Garza, comes in talking smack and, whoo, Leo Rush is heated. He just wants to get his hands on him. Akira Dazawa is like, no, 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 no. You wrestle, him. you deal with him on your time, not his time, your time. That's my opinion, what he was trying to say. Yeah, yeah it says it right here, too. That was on WWE exclusive. Next up, we would have a match. Uh, hold up. No. Yeah, there was a match before that. Where's the women's match? We have a match between... Uh, Vanessa Bourne. And... Chink Lee? Yeah. And the Chinese woman. I have a... You can't pronounce her name either, huh? It's... It's Xia uh, Li. Xia Li? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Xia Li versus who? Vanessa Bourne. Yep. Vanessa Bourne is the friend and, uh, I guess, high standard woman of education and looks that, uh, to her friend who got freaking kicked and <sighs> no face broken, bloodied as hell from last week. Ultimately, she tries to defend her friend's author but gets wrecked as well. And during that match, Shayna Baszler and her two lackeys, the horsewomen, come into the ring, picking a fight with her, and it would seem that she would be the next target. But, nope. She goes to set, then, after they push out of the ring, they announce that nobody can take her down. That she is going, she has literally been the NXT Women's Champion for over a year in her second reign, and that nobody is going to take it from her. And here comes Rhea Ripley. After beating Shayna Baszler and her own game with the handcuffs at War Games says that she didn't beat her. She plans on taking that title. So now it is confirmed that Rhea Ripley and Shayna Baszler will fight again. <laughs> I would have liked to see the Chinese woman fight her, but eh, we'll have to wait and see. Finally, we have Tommaso Ciampa versus Finn Balor, in which case the match ends 
spectacularly. Damn, that was a good match. Finn Balor won that match, and Adam Cole is there to congratulate him. And I kind of figured this was happening because the way it was set up. The second, the second, Adam Cole put his hand on Finn, uh, Finn Balor's shoulder. That was the cue because he knew he was right there in position. Pele! The uh, one of the only two people I know besides AJ Styles who does that. Is the Pele roundhouse flip kick into the face. And then, now we have the question. Where does his resolve rely in? NXT, the Undisputed Era, or himself? Well, sure as hell ain't the Undisputed Era. He just made his point clear. He wants that title. And he don't care who has it. He's going to get it. The Prince must have the crown. All I know is Prince Devin. <laughs> Anything you want to take out of this? Mm. The, oh. Yeah. Mm. And I, I don't know where I was a good match against the Champa versus Finn Balor. It wasn't for Adam Cole. Not the Champa would have to win. But Use that that move for New Japan called the the Buddy Sunday. <laughs> the move he always used to win. Mm. Like now you're using it in WWE NXT. You mean that uh, double hook DDT looking like a uh, it like brain buster? Yeah, yeah, it looked like a butterfly brain buster. You hook you hook your hook your arm and tighten the grip. Pick you up and drop you. And you hey, it looks like something I want to d- use because uh, my buddy John actually showed me that, and I call it. The, he called it the uh, the Black Dragon DDT. I was like, okay. I just call it the Dragon Buster because of the fact that the idea is you double heart, you put it in the DDT, and you lift, and then you drop. <laughs> that I would do to people just for the big finishing move, definitely on tables, steel steps, and uh, announcer tables. All that. And st- it's steel chairs and all the uh, title belts under me and just go, wow. Oh, he's out. No, no, no. Otherwise, I'm just going to stutter everybody <laughs> and knee shot him. <laughs> Be like, uh, what do you call it? Seth Rollins and, uh, Kenny Omega and what's another one? Uh, Cody Obushi. They all had the knees. I got knees too. I love using my knees. Oh, I'm going to definitely. That would be my wrestling style. Definitely want to do that. I want to get one of the latest games and uh, definitely create our characters and make it really look like us. That'd be fun. All right. That said, if you like this video, because this is it, this is the end of this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Hit the subscribe button, like the content, and hit that notification bell for the next Heavens and Monsters podcast, which will be SmackDown. And 205 Live. Oh, uh, I got something to say on that because uh, <laughs> it's not just me who messed up. Find out in the next episode. Peace out, y'all. This is me, Sir Dragon, and the phenomenal Chris Petrie. We'll see you again. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>